Here is a website one of the pro members shared for a video idea a few days back. The first thing that grabbed my attention right away was this incredible scroll animation. Now we have covered a lot of scroll animations before, but this one was a bit more challenging. However, I managed to create a close replica of this effect using scroll trigger. In today's video, I'll show you how to build this awesome scroll animation using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and some basic scroll trigger instances. If you find these videos helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. To access the source code, check out CodeGrip Pro via the link in the description. For the price of a latte, you can get exclusive access to the source code for all the videos and receive monthly website templates too. Alright, let's get right into the code. Let's start by creating a container. We'll need a few sections. First, the hero section. We'll add an h1 tag here. Next, the info section which will contain two rows. We'll add an h1 tag in each of the rows. I'll add another info section with some paragraph text and a few images. To allow extra scrolling room, we'll add a section called white space. Next, we'll create a section called pin. Here, we'll add the animated element called reveler. We'll divide it into two parts, creating a plus sign using clip path later with CSS. Finally, we'll add a section for the website content. For now, we'll just add an h1 tag. That's it. Let's get to styling now. First, we'll start by resetting some default styles using the universal selector. Next, we'll set the width and height of the HTML and body to 100% and choose the font family. For images, we'll ensure they cover their container perfectly with the object fit cover property. Now let's style our headings. We'll make the text uppercase, set the font size to 200 pixels and adjust the letter spacing. For the hero section, we'll set it to full viewport size, add a background image and center the content both horizontally and vertically using flexbox. The h1 inside the hero section will use a lighter font and a white color. Moving on to the info section, we'll make it taller than the viewport, set the background to black and the text to white. Each header row inside the info section will have a height of 250 pixels and some padding. We'll align the first row to start and the second row to the end. For the header info section, we'll position it relative, make it fill the viewport and use flexbox for layout. The background will be black with the white text. The paragraph inside header info will have padding, a different font and a large font size. We'll display the images inside header info in a row with some gaps. For the pin section, we'll position it absolutely and set it to be quite tall to create a scrollable area. The white spaces section will be relatively positioned, take up a lot of vertical space and have a black background. Now let's style the revealer. It will be positioned absolutely and divided into two parts to create a plus sign using clip path. Finally, the website content section will have a white background and contain an H1 with a smaller font size.
That's it for the CSS. Now let's move on to JavaScript. Let's begin by creating a new instance of Lenis to handle our smooth scrolling. Next, we'll make sure that Lenis updates scroll trigger on scroll. We need to sync Lenis with GSAP, so we add Lenis to GSAP ticker and disable lag like smoothing for a smoother experience. You can refer to the Lenis documentation for better explanation. Now let's register the scroll trigger plugin with GSAP. First, we create a scroll trigger instance for the pinned section. This will pin the pinned section at the top of the viewport and keep it pinned until the end of the white space section. The second scroll trigger instance pins the header info section from the top of the viewport until the end of the white space section. To animate the rotation of the revealer element, we create another scroll trigger instance. This instance targets the pin section and runs from the top of the viewport to the end of the header info section. <coughs> the rotation of the revealer element is tied to scroll progress, creating a smooth 360 degree rotation. For the clip path animation, we set up another scroll trigger instance. This one also targets the pin section and runs from the top of the viewport to the end of the header info section. As we scroll, the clip path of the revealer elements changes, creating a dynamic shape transformation. Next, we create another scroll trigger instance to animate the position of the revealer element. This one targets the header info section and runs from the top of the viewport to halfway through the section. The revealer element will move from 35% to 50% of the viewport width based on the scroll progress. Finally, we add another scroll trigger instance to scale the revealer element. This one targets the white space section and runs from top to the bottom of the section. The revealer element will scale up as we scroll, creating a dramatic zoom effect. And that's it. We have successfully implemented a series of scroll animations using scroll trigger and GSAP, creating a dynamic and engaging user experience. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.